Jared over at My T Brain has been working on the piezoelectric disc and exactly how it works. He's been analyzing everything and he has some very good insights. Here's some of his work, guys. Hopefully, it helps us all understand this better. All right, now that piezo is just about ready to pull and touch the uh, very highly positively charged disc here. Uh, right now, I have the piezo going. Turn that all the way down so you can hear it. Like it's enough to even make the, uh, the big disc swing. Can't really hold it steady enough, but it's about ready to touch there any second. It seems like, it feels like. Let's increase the frequency. It's like bumping into like this electrostatic wall on the disc. Now it's slowing down, maybe because it transferred some charge when it got close enough. But now that I've increased the frequency, it's really pushing it. Keep increasing the frequency. See what happens. Oh, now it just stopped. And it's going again. Increasing frequency. Right now my static meter just auto turned off, but it was sitting at about plus, oh, there, there. All right, can I turn this on again? There we go. So static meter is reading three and a half. Keep increasing frequency on here. No. Keep increasing frequency. Increase frequency. Increase frequency. Okay, it looks like I am. Oh, looks like I am sitting at. Okay, I've already passed the midpoint on the potentiometer. So now, as I turn it up, we're going to be decreasing frequency, increasing amplitude. It is really making that big disc swing around. Oh. You can kind of see the piezo is a little bit off canter, but it's the best I can do. Right, let's keep going. All right, there's an audible frequency, but we're actually just around the midpoint. Oh, zippy zap, zippy zap. Man, the, uh, the big disc is really rotated. I'm gonna try pushing the button. Can watch this when I push the button. Oh, I gotta wait until it's steady again. Mm. 
Sounds like the buzzer's giving up the ghost. Is it going to pull it again? I'm not changing anything at the moment, letting it steady. I was right when I pushed the button, it did that. I think when I push the button, it like releases the static charge that has built up on the piezo because I've observed it on here. When I push the button, I'll see this go positive about a, a couple hundred volts positive. And then when I had the negative attached to this big disc, um, it would lose a little bit of its negative. It would go down a couple hundred volts. So it'd be at like negative two kV and then I'd go down to like negative 1.6 or negative 1.7 kV when I push the button. There. When I push the button, it seems like it pulls it closer. It's like it's grounding out the, uh, the piezo. And so makes it easier for the piezo to get attracted. Holding down the button. There we go. Now we're going to let that build up a little bit, and then I'm going to push the button again. I'm going to push it when it's far away. Yeah, I think you got to have a certain amount of static charge built up on the big disc and a certain amount of static charge built up on the piezo, and then when you push the button on the piezo, it's like, I don't know. There you go. Keep that on a little bit longer. It's already getting longer than I wanted it to be, but. It seems like frequency does have some kind of effect on this charge differential between the two. All right, so on my Nano VNA, we got our Smith chart with the green, and we got our SWR line with the magenta there. Right now, the stimulus is set to 50 kilohertz at the bottom, 130 kilohertz at the top. What we're gonna see is we're gonna watch the SWR chart change, and especially this low peak right here on the magenta. Uh, right now, that low peak is around uh, 68 to 72 kilohertz, something like that, with no pressure on it. Um, you can see my, kind of see my weight scale, my pressure scale. I'm going to set that right in the middle. I'm going to slowly just keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. And right there, that, that's the max out on the scale. I can push down harder. And you can see it starts, the Smith chart starts getting big again. Um, but the important part is that magenta line right there. So I lift it up. We can see that the low spot for the SWR starts dropping back down. Take it away and it's all the way gone. So it moves really quickly for the first low amount of pressure. So that's about 0.5 kilos. Right there, that's one kilo. And right now that low spot, um, that's 80 kilohertz, thereabouts. So the, the pink marker, pink and yellow markers are at 80 kilohertz.
So if we're looking at where the gravel flour lifts, that would be right around here. That's one kilogram, 1.6 kilograms is right there. 1.8 kilograms is right there. But yeah, uh, smoke and gun. All right, I don't know if you can really see it all that well here. This spike on the spectrum analyzer is, what is that? That is my 624 kilohertz spike from the Tesla coil as measured at the um, ultrasound circuit. Um, I have the ultrasound set right now so that when I push down the button, I'm getting a power transfer. I'm getting that spike to go down. I will adjust the test of, or the ultrasound so you can see that there are other settings where it will not do this power transfer, but for now, watch the amplitude of this spike. I push down the button. As I hold it down, that spike goes down. All right, so right now we're at negative 69. When I don't have the button pushed down, it's at about negative 62 dBm. All right. So now, as I have it pushed down, I'm going to keep it pushed down. I'm going to reduce the frequency of the ultrasound. All right, so now I got the ultrasound way lower. You can see as I hold it down, the height of that isn't really changing. Sorry about the mouse. All right, so now I'm going to turn it back up until I get that to the point where it does change. And that is when I get all those guys to bunch up right before it. Ah, look at that. It goes down and then eventually they all come together and boom, now they're all locked in. Then when I let go, the, the locking goes away. But up until it locks in, that's going down. Now once it's locked in, it's at negative 56. I let go, it goes back down to negative 62. Uh, as for the position of the ultrasound circuit, let's count it. Uh, right now I got it at the 10 o'clock position, so I'm gonna go back counterclockwise. There's one turn, two turn. All right, so there's two and a third turns from uh, fully counterclockwise, right? Starting position fully counterclockwise. I go one turn, two turn, and then about a third. And that's not quite there, so I gotta turn it up just a little past that until all those things start bunching together. I'm watching the height of that spike where my green dot is. And it definitely goes down up until, boom, until I have it set so it's right on the edge, jumping into and transferring. As those frequencies are scooping up, it's dropping down. But there we go. I can, I can have it set so that after it's done doing that scoop up, they all end at that frequency and I'm getting an extra 8 dB uh, into that spot. Probably important. All right, you're gonna see this thing rotate back and forth, right? The normal clockwise, counterclockwise rotation. But then you're gonna see it swing towards the corner. See, there's the clockwise, counterclockwise, whatever. Who cares about that? That's lame sauce. But... Fast forward up here. Fast forward a little more. Right there. Right there, you see that? It's gonna do it some more. There we go. There we go. Let's let's go back and slow that down. Do you see that? Am I crazy? I'm not crazy, right? Like it's swinging out that way. Right, that's not clockwise, counterclockwise. That's swinging towards one of these arms. It's 
speed it back up. See, there's certain spots where it'll swing out that way. Certain ultrasound spots. There it is again. Like that was that was some serious deflection right there. And then I even I noticed it and I pointed out here with one of these crossbars I got. See, I'm pointing towards this corner here where I see it. It's pushing out that way. So now I turn on the uh, the weight, the scale, and I don't notice any weight loss on there. But then I got to shake it around. I got to turn the thing on. I got to zero it out. But I never noticed any weight loss on that. So it's hard to say. It's hard to say. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. Do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.